ladies and gentlemen two brand new legendary archer commanders have officially been confirmed coming to rise of kingdoms and that is herman prime and asher benipal so today we're gonna go over everything that we know confirmed so far for these commanders i'm gonna be giving you guys the talent builds that i think are gonna be the most effective and also we're gonna go over some implications for herman prime because we might know more than we think about what their skills could be and herman prime might actually be a smite damage commander but first what's going on guys guys cheers in case you guys haven't heard already herman prime is going to be a wheel of fortune commander and his talent trees are archer versatility and support which is interesting he doesn't have the skill tree and we're going to talk about that actually later in the video because that actually has some implications there a little bit of loose implications i'll admit but there's there could be something going on and asher benipal over here is actually a archer conquering and skill based commander so we have one open field commander which is going to be herman prime and then we have one conquering commander this dude's going to be good for rallies okay and it could be the case that he's decent for open field i mean sometimes we see high damage damage rally commanders be pretty good in the open field and one of the things that I thought of immediately was Nebu right for example Nebu is an archer skill and conquering commander who people still use in the open field quite a bit so we're going to talk about that later in the video but that is everything that we know for sure of course Asher Benipal is the mightiest governor commander obviously now before we go over what we might be able to assume about the skills for Herman Prime I want to quickly go over some talent builds okay Okay, so let's quickly go over what I think the best talent builds could be for Herman Prime. Now, to do that, we're going to use Emotep and his talents as a baseline here because, as you know, Herman Prime is going to be a versatility commander, which means you're not going to put any talents in his yellow talent tree regardless. So, all we care about is the archer talent tree and the support talent tree. And there's actually quite a bit of different options to go with here depending on the skills on Herman Prime. I have three talent builds that I'm going to share with you, but really quick, I just want to point out that I've noticed the four arguably most commonly used open field archers are all skill tree archer commanders okay and that is that's really interesting and I think that Herman Prime could potentially be the first insanely powerful archer commander to use the support tree now we have Scipio Prime in the game who also has the support tree and typically he's used as a secondary that's not to say that he has to be he can be used as a primary commander with great effect okay but Herman Prime could potentially be the Scipio Prime of of archers and I'll also point out that every prime commander in the game so far has been basically a must have commander you must have them they are extremely good so Herman Prime could potentially be in the same category as well I would be willing to bet to be honest with you as you can see here this first talent build on the screen is sort of like the safest all-around talent build that I can think of okay you basically just don't get the top talents for both of these talent trees and that's not to say that like for example whistling arrows actually pretty good talent but I think you would just rather get everything else before it right obviously you're going to get rejuvenate obviously you're going to get razor sharp obviously you're going to get venomous sting and then if you also want to get emergency production then you don't really have enough points to grab whistling arrows honestly I think phoenix tail arrows is probably worth getting so again this is mostly just the all-around most generic option that I can think of but one thing that we have to consider is if Herman Prime has additional normal attack chances so think of Liu Che think of Gorgo they have a 25% chance of launching another normal attack and if Herman has that same sort of gimmick I should say then I would say this talent build is probably much better and that's because you grab Phoenix tail arrows still which have a 10% chance of dealing an uh, additional damage factor right so you'll have more chances of triggering Phoenix tail arrows but you also will have more chances of triggering whistling arrows which again have a 10% chance to increase all damage by 25% for two seconds that is honestly pretty good so I would come all the way up here to whistling arrows and then you still obviously grab rejuvenate over here and you'll have three points in loose formation which is very powerful and then you have two points left over there's really nowhere else that you can put this because there's the versatility tree so you just throw them in elixir or you could maybe put them over here if you know for sure that you're never going to pair him with somebody that heals obviously if you put those two points in versatility tree you'll get half a point of attack and half a point of health which 
obviously is going to be better than two points in Alexa if you're not healing at all so just keep that in mind but the final talent build that I want to give you guys for Herman Prime is actually in the case that Herman has healing which obviously until the skills get officially revealed we have no idea if he's going to have healing or not but if he does for some reason have some open field healing factor like with Boudicca Prime for example then I would definitely grab counterattack here okay it gives you nine percent increased health for three seconds when you heal of course you're going to get extra healing from Alexa regardless you come all the way up here and you actually put one point in Cage of Thorns because you just have no other good place to really put that last point you could put it in like one percent of archer attack if you wanted to i would rather have a march speed reduction it's aoe so i mean it's small it's something so i would rather grab just one point here but it's up to you obviously you still grab venomous sting you still grab razor sharp and you have some points left over so you throw them in full quiver just to get some extra stats here if you really wanted to you could do something like this where you move these points over here and it actually lets you grab one percent of archer health instead of the one percent of archer attack here obviously you're trading this attack for this attack so that that doesn't really move the needle but yeah this is probably a a better choice to be honest with you this is also health in case you were wondering so this is a talent build that I would hold in the back of your mind if you know he comes out and he's got some powerful healing factor or something like that so that's going to be it for Herman Prime's talent builds what about the talent builds for Asher Benipal well we're going to go over some Nebu talent builds that I have because he has the same exact talent trees and so we can use some talent trees here as an example this is one talent build that you could go for if you're open field fighting okay just to be clear you grab feral nature you grab obviously razor sharp and you grab venomous sting then you have a handful of points and I would recommend grabbing buckler shields reducing counterattack damage by nine percent is pretty substantial and you don't have to spend that many points to get it and then you only have three points left over so you can either put two percent archer attack and half a percent of normal attack damage or something like that or you could just grab moment of triumph and this is going to give you nine percent all damage for the first ten percent of your battle it's not much but if you're jumping in and out of battles a lot then I mean it could be something it could be a nice little bonus you might be able to pop off your active skill with that bonus nine percent damage so it's something to consider another talent build that you could try is something like this this is a more sort of well-rounded generic talent build it depends on what you want to do here with the final points obviously you grab rejuvenate you grab tactical mastery and you grab heraldic shield you come all the way up to whistling arrows and you grab razor sharp but then you only have two points for buckler shield so if you wanted to you could take one point away from whistling arrows or one point away from tactical mastery or heraldic shield or you just leave buckler shield at two and you only have six percent less counter attack damage but what if you want to rally with asher banapal what if he's actually rally meta which is shocking to think about because it's possible that that's the case we already see that Boudicca prime and henry are an op rally combo they're super super powerful sometimes you throw Juge leong in there if you want to but this dude could take it to the next level okay i mean he's the next generation this is a talent build that you could consider okay you basically come all the way up to entrenched which gives you three percent more damage and three percent less damage taken if you are rallying a structure which is great you obviously grab buckling shield uh, buckler shield along the way you grab rejuvenate here you grab venomous sting and then you have a bunch of points left over I grabbed razor sharp over here it depends on what you want to spend these on you could throw them in rapid fire I think arrows knocked is really good here for the rally because you get an extra nine percent attack you know that eventually you'll be below 50 percent so that's a guaranteed W right there so I went ahead and I grabbed rapid fire you get one and a half percent normal attack damage that could be nice as it will compound throughout the entirety of the rally so this is kind of one talent build that you could consider the reason I grab rapid fire is because you just don't have enough talent points to grab clarity if you go ahead and grab all these other core talents that I think are really really important for rallies so yeah it is what it is um if you really wanted to take away like arrows knocked or something like that and try to grab clarity then you could do that so i think this is probably the safest bet for a rally talent build but also i'm not an archer rally lead so if you are and you know a better talent build definitely use that these are just some ideas that i'm tossing around in my head okay now with that out of the way let's talk about the skills for herman prime because we actually might know a little bit more about what herman prime is going to do than you might actually think one thing that we know for sure is that a lot of times with the prime commanders there is 
one or two of their skills that will sort of pay homage to the epic version of that commander so one thing that i want to go over really quick and this is actually compiled by a discord user who goes by the name of shillich i think i hope i'm not butchering that horribly but they basically just put together some screenshots of the epic versions of commanders versus their prime legendaries and here you'll see some interesting trends so first we have Boudica prime and Boudica epic okay the epic version of Boudica her third skill says that she gains some amount of rage and has a healing factor here she also has a healing factor on her legendary version if we take a look at the fourth skill she has a chance to get 50 percent increased damage or 100 percent increased damage or 150 percent increased damage for a single turn and on Boudica prime her third skill also has a chance of giving her bonus damage for an additional turn so a lot of obvious overlap here but it doesn't end there because we obviously have Joan of Arc Prime and Joan of Arc Epic Epic Joan of Arc is known on her fourth skill for giving you bonus normal attack damage and on the third skill of Joan of Arc Prime we see she also gets one second of bonus normal attack damage also on the active skill for Joan Epic we have some rage regeneration here and some nearby buffing and of course with Joan of Arc Prime her active skill also gives additional rage over time to your nearby allies and a little bit of all damage so it's not a one-to-one -one, but it's it, there's obviously some clear overlap here now if we take a look at CPO he sort of follows this trend I would say this one is a little bit more of a stretch we have on the fourth skill of CPO Prime a chance to reduce damage taken and give yourself a shield and on the active skill for epic CPO he also has a 25 percent reduced damage taken now this is skill damage whereas this is all damage and increased counterattack. so this isn't a great comparison but but it does show that there's a little bit of overlap with the ability to reduce incoming damage regardless of it being maybe different damage types between the two so if we take that same logic and we apply it to Herman Prime we can take a look at some of his skills and see which of these things could be carried over to Herman Prime okay on the active skill there's a single target damage factor I don't think that's uh, it doesn't really give us much to work off of but we do see some rage reduction to the enemy and some silencing which is actually really crazy for an epic commander here we see some amount of attack and march speed i think that's kind of a generic i don't think that's really gimmicky um the third skill is for garrisons which we know is not going to be the case and here we see a 10 percent increase in normal attack damage and a 10 percent chance to gain rage so there's three sort of gimmicks here okay there's silencing of the target there is rage manipulation either debuffing their rage or increasing your rage and we also see bonuses to normal attack damage and this is where i think the fact that herman prime is not a skilled tree commander okay he's not skill tree he is support tree why would he be support tree and not skill tree well obviously this is all assumption okay but if there is the case that herman prime is a smite damage commander okay i think there's some things that could be pointing in that direction first of all he doesn't have the skill tree okay and we know that the skill tree typically focuses on skill damage right which we would it would make no sense for a smite damage commander to have the skill tree like it would make no sense at all so what would we have either attack defense or or support that's the only really options and also we see on the fourth skill from herman that he does give you bonus normal attack damage and what does smite damage scale off of normal attack damage so there's two little tiny hints here that suggest that he might be a smite damage commander now of course we have no idea and honestly i don't know if this really proves anything but i think that there is a chance that he could be smite damage i really do think that there is a chance if he's not smite damage then i think at some point on herman prime we're either going to see silencing or we're going to see some rage manipulation either bonuses for you reduction for them i think those two things or, or sorry those three things um one of those things we're definitely going to see i think in some capacity which i think is going to be really interesting now there's a few other things that i want to touch on here herman prime completely shatters the things that we thought we knew about prime commanders we thought a couple of things one we thought that the prime version would not be the same troop type as the epic right historically that's never been the case we've never seen an epic commander in the prime version be the same troop type in this case we know herman will be the same troop type it will be archers or epic 
archers for legendary so that myth or that sort of rule of thumb has been shattered the second thing that we know for sure is that Lilith is not just sticking to the integration or the leadership commanders for prime versions okay obviously we got Joan of Arc who is integration we got Boudica who is integration and we have Scipio who is leadership and so the assumption was that okay well it looks like they're just giving the prime treatment to the epics that don't have a specific troop type and as it turns out now that we see Herman Prime as Archer we know that that is completely not the case okay and I think another reason people thought that is because people suspected that we would be getting a, a Sun Tzu Prime right and people thought okay well why would they not be doing Sun Tzu Prime and they thought okay well maybe it's because they're only giving primes to integration and leadership commanders but again now we know that that is not true and also just for the record uh, in the past the devs have said that eventually they will be giving a prime to all epics that 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 was their plan to do that they didn't guarantee they would do that but they planned on doing it eventually and i gotta say it's been over a year since we got a new prime commander and they're taking their sweet time let me tell you that so a lot of the rules that we thought to be the case for the prime treatment have been shattered with herman prime and that is really exciting stuff for the future of the game now there's a couple of things that we still have to talk about first of all i think a lot of people were expecting a leadership cycle next and if you look back like back all the way back to the beginning of the game the first time that we got a leadership commander was after archers right so we got archers cavalry infantry archers leadership okay so if we look back earlier in the year okay we got Zhuge Liang who was archers and then we got Huo who was part of the cavalry cycle and then we got Liu Che and Gorgo who are part of the infantry cycle and if we compare that to for example the first time that we got leadership commanders in the game at all which was Theodora and YSS we saw that it was Cavs, infantry archers leadership and the last time that we got a leadership commander was heraclius which was back in february of this year so i don't know exactly how they're sprinkling in the leadership cycle but one thing is for sure and that is that if you compare the release cycle in the past it still matches up with archers being next right if you assume that you know Tamiris is Zhuge Liang well then we would get Huo next and then we would get Liu Che after that and then we would get another archer which would be Herman Prime and then after archers we should be getting I guess leadership I, I guess I don't know I don't really know I guess what I'm trying to say is that the next release cycle being archers isn't really shocking like it shouldn't be that shocking right there's some precedent to it at least at some point in the past whether we expected it this time or not it has been the case at one point that we would get archers after infantry so there you go the last thing I want to talk about too is sort of the release timing of these commanders right because I just made a video the other day talking about sort of the speed with which new commanders are coming into the game and in that video we discovered that new commanders actually aren't coming into the game any faster than they historically have been I mean that's just the data we looked and it's always been like 70 days or maybe 85 days in between new commander cycles and people are looking at these two new archers and saying well wait a minute didn't we just get Gorgo and it's like yeah we we just got Gorgo but these aren't in the game yet like they're they're announced already sure and that makes it feel like these commanders are coming faster but we actually don't know when these commanders are coming they didn't announce anything about that it could be the case that they don't come for months at this point right they simply just revealed them and one of the things that I want to point out and again I, I do think that you know from the moment we got Gorgo to the moment that we get Ashurbanipal right I think it's probably going to be about 70 days or 85 tops right like I suspect it would be 70 if it's 56 then yeah I'm I'm starting to suspect we're getting these commanders too fast and I'll give you that for sure but I suspect it will probably be about 70 days I'm gonna guess that the first Herman Prime wheel will be January 2nd that's my guess I'm throwing it out there now I could be wrong the other option is December 19th that would be like the soonest I would expect to see the Herman wheel of fortune come around and I sh I hope that's not the case that's really fast in my opinion okay especially because I suspect Ashurbanipal is 
possibly going to counter Gorgo. I mean, it's an archer rally. Like we just got an infantry garrison. I don't know. I feel like that could be the case. Also, I feel like infantry garrisons aren't that broken right now. Like I don't feel like there's a inherent like need for them to be fixed. So yeah, I think December 19th would be the soonest I would see the Herman prime wheel. I think January 2nd, that is my best guess. But I also want to point out that like in the past, right, there have been leaks that come out that would basically tell players what the next commanders are going to be ahead of time. Okay. And I, I know that because I used to cover them more on the channel here. And what I think the developers and Lilith are doing is I think that they are revealing the next set of commanders earlier than they typically used to and i think the reason that they're doing that is to combat the leaks right i mean they kind of know that for the past five years they haven't really been able to stop leaks that well i mean sometimes there will be months where there aren't that many and then they come back again historically lilith has had a, a difficult time combating leaks for rise of kingdoms and i think the strategy that we're seeing them take lately is just reveal the commander soon just reveal the commander okay and that's kind of what we saw with Liute and Gorgo we saw them revealed pretty early as a way of them combating leaks for those commanders and I think what's happening here is they're announcing these commanders now that way they don't get leaked they basically had to control and release the information on their terms I mean these were first drop these dropped in an official Lilith video which is shocking typically we don't get that right typically we see it from leaks first I think I think images of these guys possibly leaked like a, a two hours before the video went up or something like that it was an insignificant amount of time okay obviously we still don't have the skills so there's that so I just want to put that theory on people's radar okay yes we just got Gorgo and yes we're already talking about the next thing but I think the reason we're talking about the next thing is because Lilith is trying to combat leaks they're just revealing the commanders as soon as possible on their own terms and we probably won't see them in the game much sooner than we would expect to see them okay I think we're going to see them January 2nd. That's my best guess. That's the soonest I think we would see them. It could be December 19th. And it's also kind of a blessing, right? Because if there were people like you watching who were thinking, okay, well, maybe I'll get Gorgo. Well, now you know that like there's something else in the pipeline. It's coming. Okay. And you can make the decision. If you want to get Gorgo, get Gorgo but you already know there's archers coming okay so you have to kind of weigh that there's a there's an opportunity cost there and the fact that you at least have the knowledge that these two new commanders could be coming sooner than you expect I think that that actually helps you make your investment decisions so that is my two cents um I still think we're gonna see these guys about 70 days after Robo just like we've always seen for all basically most new commanders coming out and that's my theories as to what the best talent builds are probably going to be and what the skills for Herman could possibly be like with that being said guys if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of Kings players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on herman prime and ashurbanipal are these commanders that you expected to see coming to rise of kingdoms herman prime came out of left field for me i'm gonna be honest with you okay he is not the next prime commander that i thought we would get but what i will say is he is german and isn't there an event that happened this weekend in germany an in-player event right like they could they could be just they could just be shouting out germany right now i mean like that's the timing kind of makes sense you know what i mean so uh it is what it is maybe that's why we're seeing herman prime this time that rhymed anyway with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace